In this video, we're going to talk about how to approach trading ranges using price action. But before we're going to talk about the price action in trading ranges, I want to quickly preface that the signal bars today on my chart may look very different from what you could have seen on your chart today. Now, we know that tick charts are not static. There are multiple factors that affect how tick charts are plotted, broker data provider, reloading historical data, time zone, etc. But today, for whatever reason, my tick charts and my signal bars are very, very different. So I want to talk more about the structure of this market we have and how to approach a trading range like this, because our setups may vary a lot today, even though from price action perspective, the context is still the same. Now, when we are trading trading ranges, you need to take into consideration the health of a trading range. Now, health of a trading range means if the trading range is healthy, it's going to be testing both sides of trading ranges without any imbalance. Now, we can see on the left side of the chart here, a healthy trading range. Why? Because the key levels are tested multiple times. We go from the resistance all the way to the support, bounce here, bounce here, and bounce here. It is very predictable. The support and resistance are creating massive bounces, and this is how price action is supposed to react in trading ranges. However, on the right side of the chart as the day was developing, we can see that this is not happening. The momentum is a little bit different. And this is a bullish imbalance because we can see that the prices are failing to reach even the middle of the trend range, let alone the bottom half of the trend range. So this is a clearly a bullish imbalance. Now we can also see that you can potentially plot an uptrend to visualize this imbalance. It is fits really well because we have series of high highs and high lows, but generally these wider patterns are not as reliable in trend ranges. So when I'm playing overall larger trend range, I like to just focus on the imbalance alone. In that case, I don't get trapped going long way too high because that can sometimes happen. Remember, we are still in a train range, so we have to respect the resistance. Now, as you know, most breakouts of train ranges will fail. We have a failed breakout here, which you don't want to fade just yet because you have imbalance and the breakout may be stronger. And you have a failed breakout to the downside, which eventually push back into a train range. Now, if you're watching a structure like this, failed breakout can a lot of times generate strong momentum in opposite direction, okay? And once prices are pushing back below the resistance, back into trend range, your target is the low of the day, the important key level. This is your target where you expect for prices to go. And in that case, you don't want to be going long too quickly because if you're coming from a breakout and you're heading back into a trend range, you may find yourself in a situation where you have multiple breaks in new extremes for the downtrend. Notice you have a downtrend break new low. You can redraw it slightly wider, but you have a break new low again. This may make you feel that the downtrend played out. But remember, keep the overall picture in back of your mind. The overall picture is a trend range. We're about to reach the low of the day so you can extend the wider pattern. Just make sure prices are not reversing on you strongly, which in this case, it never happened. Every single time prices pushed above EMA for a short time, they quickly reverse back and we can see that this right here is the main bigger downtrend that eventually was the main pattern and we had a break new extreme. So when I was watching this live, I was tweaking the channels. At first I had it like this. I had early break here, but once we continue pushing lower here from this point on, this is too strong for this just to be a break. So you can see the structure is more bearish and you just keep extending it slightly because you don't want to be going long and you wait for prices to push below EMA and resume the bearish momentum. When it comes to price action, at first the trend range was very healthy, very predictable, but suddenly we can see so many higher highs and higher lows. Now this is very weak uptrend, very lackluster, and at this point on you will still expect for prices to possibly pull back into a trend range because this was quite a massive push down. And 80% of the time, once you see such a massive push down, you can expect a smaller trend range at the bottom half of the overall trend range. However, after prices reverse back above EMA here, everything changed. This confirmed that there's more bullish momentum, a bullish imbalance, and you have new low, first entry short pullback, second entry short failure. Now this is a failed second entry short above EMA after very strong push up. Sellers are gonna get trapped selling on the wrong side of the market. Even though you have a triple top here, you cannot sell because the bias is different now. You're pushing above EMA, you were supposed to push down here, which you didn't. My signal bar is a neutral doji. You can't really go long here, but if you have better single bar, more bullish, which I've noticed some traders had, you can definitely justify a trade like this felt second entry short. After that, prices keep pushing above EMA and you have a clear bullish bias 
and you have bullish imbalance because notice push up a little bit uptrend and here this is a healthy trend range up and down up and down so you need to approach it differently you have to be cautious when you're selling and you expect for prices to keep continuing higher for the most part now we have a new high and you only have first entry long you would expect to get a second entry long here because according to rules we need to get new high for the uptrend and your goal is for prices to reach the resistance okay and how do you select the resistance finding the proper key level is a balance between putting it high enough to treat it as a high of the day but at the same time you need confirmation you cannot put it too low because you will get false information and you can see you have multiple reactions and this is not correct you need to identify the extreme so you can either put it here but you don't get much confirmation but this is not bad or you can put it slightly lower in that case you get a little bit more confirmation here and this also is decently high so we expect new high for the uptrend according to trend line rules we expect for prices to reach the resistance according to trend line rules but we only get first entry long that's not a high probability setup even though we have bullish bar here and it looks visually like two legs remember there is no break above these bars high so there is no first entry long this is where we finally broke above this bar high so this is a first entry long this is a hidden second entry long which means on a smaller time frame you would see legit second entry long but we're not trading smaller time frame hidden second entries are mainly in uptrends and more advanced setups so there is no good high probability setup after you reach the resistance you'd expect for prices to get a reversal pattern you're playing the trend range rule you have a new high first entry long pullback second entry long failure but second entry long failure is far away from ema reversal pattern needs to form close to ema which it didn't very far and you can get trapped so there is no setup here according to rules and notice what we have strong push above ema if you're going to get reversal pattern and the sellers are going to be strong the ema is going to reject prices and you're going to continue pushing lower the fact that it didn't happen prices completely negated the ema like it's not even there and pushed strongly above confirmed the overall bullish imbalance and at that point on you have new low formed first attempt to sell pull back second entry short failure because the bias right now is bullish you have felt second entry short big bullish bar push above ema and now you're trading a bullish imbalance which means you're not picking top blindly you're mainly letting this bullish imbalance play out at the same time you're in a trend range so you cannot buy directly into highs the best way to play a situation like this once you're too close to these highs you can tweak it a little bit as you get more confirmation you have to remember you don't want to sell top blindly but you don't want to go long directly into highs as well so the best way to play generally is to let the two like a correction play out and hope you get higher low right above ema let this play out and hope you get higher low right above the ema so you have room to these highs which in this instance you get a higher low but it's far away from ema you don't work for a scalp it's really far away from ema and here you have higher low it's not a bad setup but it's quite close to these highs it's getting a little bit stacked so overall better to wait here so this is area where you have to be patient bullish imbalance but you're at the highs and you can see the smaller train range can form then you have new low first entry short second entry short push below ema confirm bearish momentum and lower high notice every single time here you have series of higher highs but suddenly you keep creating lower highs so once we're coming from the resistance and we confirm the second entry short push below ema and a great bearish bar i tried to take it my limit order didn't get filled because you can see there's a gap there is no tick back but this is a decent setup because this is extra safe confirmation market push lower but we are in a bullish imbalance and there was a massive rally to the upside now at this point on you have a failed breakout which you don't want to fade just yet because bullish imbalance may create stronger breakout and you can sometimes even continue pushing higher this short term uptrend played out with the break new extreme and prices are slowly pulling below exponential moving average now when you're watching this you can see that the uptrend played out and you also combine it with the fell breakout above this main trading range and also if you're playing the wider pattern you can see that it reached a break and a new extreme so all channels even the wider one even the short term one have a break and a new extreme so after new extreme is reached and you're pushing below ema this is where you expect for prices to pull back and test this breakout area because we broke higher and never tested it and notice as you're pushing lower you have new low first entry short pull back second entry short and a second entry short like this is confirming the wider channel and this is a very great setup because it is a repeat pattern to what we had one week ago all right here's the similar repeat pattern that we're going to talk about you can see that also we have uptrend break new high we broke above the main key level and we have same situation new low first entry short pull back second entry short of two key entry points and these highs later on set up the possible key entry point 
for all of these setups. Okay, so this was a great setup. I remember taking this. So here we have the exact same scenario, first entry short, second entry short, and also there's a new high, first entry long, second entry long feather. But notice my signal bar. I have a bullish bar as a signal bar, and by the time bearish bar form is way too big. By the time scalp was already made, your stop loss will have to go one tick above this bar right here. So even though this is perfect context-wise high probability setup, I cannot enter. But if you have better setup here, this is great entry because two key entry points are holding and two high probability setups in one. Okay, then we have downtrend working lower. You have a break of this downtrend, so you expect for prices to create new extreme. You have new low, first entry short, pullback, second entry short. Another great setup off the EMA. Downtrend is new low, you're coming off the fill breakout. Remember, you're expecting for prices to reach the low of the day. And once again, look at my signal bar here, bullish bar followed by bullish reversal bar. Then you have this bar right here. So nothing really formed well, but on your chart, as I know, because I've seen traders uh, taking this trade because they had much better signal bar. This is a great high priority setup if you have a great signal bar on your chart. But notice break new low, break another new low. So this is a scenario that we were talking about. You're in a trading range, so expect for prices to go back into a trading range, but you have multiple breaks and multiple new extremes indicating there's possibly a wider pattern. So this is where you will redraw the channel, something like this. You can see you bounce off the lows. Prices are correcting to these highs. And notice, even though it looks very cluttered here, but I'm going to quickly delete the channel. Important thing is you're focusing on the short setup. So at this point on, you're just combining the trading range rules. We expect for prices to pull back into the trading range. We're following the bias, which is bearish, and we're following the trend line rule. And right now we have a first break of this channel, and we expect new extreme. We have new low, first entry short, second entry short, and we have a new high, first entry long, second entry long feather. Even though there's a count reset for longs, technically normally we would reset the felt second entry long. You can almost treat it that way because you have a second entry long here, which felt. But once again, my single bar was bullish, quite a big bearish bar because your stop loss has to go even above the bullish bar. But this is a decent setup. And if you have better single bar, you definitely want to go short because we got two high priority setups in one, break out the channel. And even the resistance right now is coming into play. You can see that it is rejecting prices and you expect for prices to go back all the way down to this trend range. So this is how you're approaching a trend range in a situation like this. Don't be afraid to be extending the channel in this situation after you're coming from the fill breakout because the momentum is strong. Eventually, strong push down, new low, another new low, and prices keep pushing lower. So at this point on, once again, it is starting to be clear that there's another wider pattern because once you're already in the middle of trend range, your goal is for prices to reach the low of the day. So you're still playing the bearish bias. Since the bias is bearish, the high probability setup is a second entry short, a key entry point or felt second entry long. You have a short run uptrend with little overshoot, push below EMA, but this is the highest high of this push up. You have a first entry long, push below EMA, second entry long failure. One tick higher, big bearish bar reversal down off the EMA. This is a felt second entry long at the key entry point high probability setup. So after I see prices working lower, this is where I'm going to redraw another possible channel. I'm just trying to locate channels because I expect for price to reach the low of the day. The channels are not as symmetrical on this move down. So it is quite hard to find a good fitting pattern. It takes quite a bit of work when you see a structure like this, but the goal is just to never lose sight of the short setups. And we have new low formed, first entry short, second entry short, at three key entry points, it is a triple test EMA trend line. I took the second entry short, nice bearish bar, finally. Good enough for a quick easy scalp. Market corrected. First leg up, pull back, second leg up. Market likes to move in pairs of twos, but there is no setup here above EMA. Push lower, push up, flat EMA. By the time you get a good setup for second entry long, you have a big bullish bar to push above EMA at that point on. It's too stacked, too congested. You would want to see prices to never push back above EMA to kind of swoop below EMA on one go. Prices pull back to key entry point. Confirmed it, the main key entry point. It also fits nicely off the lows, as you can see. You have lower high, but lower high is above EMA. You want to see prices to push below EMA and give you a trap. Felt second entry long. First entry long, pull back. Second entry long, failure. But it is way too stacked. One, two, three, four, five six bars, seven bars stacked next to each other, no momentum here. And then you enter a congestion here. 
If you have a congestion like this, the way to play it is either to wait for breakout to the upside and fade the breakout with the direction of a trend, which is bearish, or wait for prices to pull back out of this congestion, test the congestion and continue pushing lower and taking a lower high breakout pullback pattern. Neither one of these high probability setups formed. You would have to take setup in a congestion, which is not good. It's too stacked and you're watching prices go lower and lower. Every single time you're hitting this bottom trend channel line, you have to be careful about taking shorts because you can correct because the high priority setups appear at the key entry points, strong push up, break off the main channel. According to rules, we expect for prices to create new low. We have new high, first entry long failure, and you would expect push below EMA and a failed second entry long, but it never formed. There is no tick higher here. By the time you get a failed second entry long, it's already way too late, way too far away from EMA. Micro double bottom, first entry short, second entry short. But remember, this main pattern just reached new extreme according to price action rules. And also we are below train range, so we can expect for prices to push back into train range. For that reason, if I want to go short, which bias is still quite bearish, and this downtrend smaller one still probably going to get new extreme because there's strong residual bearish bias, I want to take lower high confirmation of the second entry short, I don't get lower high on my chart, but if you have first leg up, second leg up, new low, first entry short pullback, second entry short, and a lower high confirmation setup, that's a great entry below EMA at the key entry point. This smaller downtrend needs to get new extreme. New extreme was formed. All downtrend basically at this point on have new extreme. No setup here. You just enter a correction phase because going to rules, you expect correction phase. You broke the chain range, new high, first entry long, pullback, second entry long failure back below EMA, even back below this trend line, which it's not important at this point on because you have a break in your low. But if you confirm it and you combine it with this smaller trend range and a fell breakout and a fell second entry long below EMA, decent signal bar, it adds more confidence in the setup. Then price is never even created low that is lower than this low and strongly bounce, indicated a trend range structure. There is however no good high priority setup here, uptrend has to break new high, back push below EMA, you're in a trading range, you expect for prices to reach the support here, new low, first entry short, second entry short. Once again, my signal bar is horrible, it is an inside bar with a bullish stem at the bottom. If you have a better signal bar here, which a couple of traders had, you can take a second entry short like this, because if you take high reverse down has a nice big bearish bar, you can take a short entry and at that point on, market is about to close and it's too late to trade. So study these behaviors, very healthy trend range here, breakouts will fail reliably, eventually bullish imbalance, more of a bullish bias, finally fell breakout, generating stronger momentum in the opposite direction. And then we have a strong bearish bias when you keep extending the channels and eventually you guys can see quite a very strong bearish downtrend. The trend at this point on is too strong, which means you never want to be failing the breakout. Once the trends are so strong on its own in a big trend range, you never want to be failing the breakout because you can never time it perfectly. This was a very strong downtrend. Prices eventually pull back, but you need to safer reversal pattern to go long.